Growing up, my mom and her boyfriend would beat me when my dad wasn't home. My name is Haley, and this is my story. Growing up in my real parents' home, it was very violent. Um, my dad was very abusive to my mom. And when my dad w would go to work, my mom would bring her boyfriend over and my mom would beat me and my sister. I always felt inferior to my sister or like the least favorite because she never received the as much abuse as I got and I just felt like I was just the least favorite. I was put into foster care and I was with my foster mom for three years. Me and my sister got news that we had two families that wanted to adopt us. One was in San Diego, California, and one was in Florida. And so we made plans with our caseworker to meet the family in Florida first because it was the farthest, farthest one away from California. We met them and we loved them, so we got, they adopted us. When I first was adopted, um, I started to have really bad nightmares and flashbacks. So um, I went in to see a specialist and they did all these tests on me and they did MRIs on my brain and my spine. And I remember them telling me that I had developed scoliosis and mild cerebral palsy because of the abuse that I had gone through. The doctor said that I was severely beaten on the left side of my brain, which affected the right side of my body. For like two years, I had to sleep with a brace on my back and I had to like learn how to use the right side of my body correctly. Doctors started to diagnose me with bipolar, schizophrenia, anxiety, depression, oppositional defiant disorder, and PTSD. Throughout the first um, few years of my adoption, I loved my parents. But when I turned 13, I started to get angry. I moved to a different school and because of that, I was being bullied by a lot of kids at school for different things. And it affected my relationship with my um, adoptive parents. There were times when uh, I would get physically aggressive with my mom and she would get physically aggressive with me. Or there were times when I would throw things. There were times when my parents took everything out of my room. I had nothing to sleep on but a tile floor for punishment. They would make me write a hundred sentences within an hour and if I did not complete the 100 sentences, they would add another 100 and they would not let me get up or eat until those sentences were done. I would be writing with bloody knuckles. And one day, um, I just got really sick of writing sentences. So I refused to write sentences and they said that if you don't write your sentences, 
that we are gonna put you in a mental hospital. I was starting to cut myself. My mom would tell me things like, I don't care if you cut yourself as long as you don't get blood on the furniture, things like that. That made me want to cut myself more out of um, defiance. I hated myself. I hated how much, like, how inferior I felt. And I, I love to hurt others, so I, if I couldn't hurt someone, I would hurt myself instead. I was Baker acted um, more and more, sometimes for two months. I was uh, very violent and I hated people. I hated, I hated me, I hated people, I hated life, so I didn't really care. I hated God. I. <laughs> my parents, my adopted parents, they loved God so, and they were very hurtful to me. So I just, you know, I had that mentality of, you know, if this is, if you love God and this is the kind of person that you are, then I, I hate God. I would do everything in my power to hurt him because I knew he saw me. I started um, hurting myself very badly so that I could make him feel pain, so that he could um, feel the pain that I felt. I started to um, try to kill myself. And so basically I lived all my life locked up in hospitals and long-term facilities. One day when I was getting released from one of my bank racks, my parents came to get me. They were picking me up and my dad was in the back seat with me and my mom was driving and I was trying to kick out the window because I didn't want to go with them. Um, and so my dad started to restrain me. I didn't want to be restrained, so I started to beat my dad. I was incarcerated for that and through that incarceration, I ended up in a long-term mental hospital facility for seven months. From there, I went to Fumsh. When I went to Fumsh, uh, basically my parents just completely gave up on me. They just didn't want anything to do with me anymore. When I went to Fumsh, it was very different than what I'd ever experienced. It was more stable than anything I've ever, any place that I've ever been to. I've, I felt comfortable. Um, I was actually introduced to Jesus in a better way. I went to Fumsh at 15 years old and left when I turned 18. When I turned 18, I had gotten communication with my real mom and she was asking me to go to Arizona with her to live with her. At first it was okay, but then it started to get more controlling because her boyfriend was very controlling and I I didn't want to be controlled, so I just, I didn't listen to him. So he kicked me out on the street and I was homeless. I didn't have any food to eat. I didn't have any place to sleep. I had heard about Legacy House through one of my close friends who was already living there. She told me how to reach out to Rich and Brandy and we made arrangements for flights and things like that. When I came to Legacy House, I was actually very excited. Um, it was a very loving atmosphere and it was very welcoming. There was a lot of fun and love 
within the house and a lot of peace. I felt like I could be myself, which I hadn't felt like that in a long time. I was still having issues with like anger and submitting to my authority. So there were times when I was just, I didn't want to um, listen to any of the directions or advice that was given to me. So I decided to leave Legacy House and I decided to go back to Arizona. I was having sex with guys for like a place to sleep, um, sometimes for just 30 minutes of air conditioning and sometimes for food. A lot of bad things were happening to me and I couldn't see a way out, so I decided that I wanted to end my life. My mentality was um, I wanted no chance of survival and I counted each and every pill and I took them. And then after I took the pills, I swallowed a whole bottle of Benadryl. The paramedics got to me and they said that um, by the time they got to me, I had three seizures and I, was, I wasn't breathing. I had an out of body experience and I was looking at myself. It was almost like I was on the ceiling. I was looking down at myself and I was like hooked up to all these machines and stuff. I just started feeling this like this pain and this fear and all my memories of like childhood and my whole life just started like replaying in front of me over and over. I saw this blue light, it was like as big as a penny at first, and then it started to get bigger, almost like swallowing the room. And I knew if it like swallowed me, I would be in hell. And so that's when I started to cry out, God. <laughs> I started to cry out to God because I knew I was on my way to hell. And I just said, like, God, please save me. I don't want to go to hell. Please just save me. Right after I said that, I heard, like, a snap, like someone snapped their finger. And right when God snapped his finger, my eyes opened. The doctors were, like, really amazed because they said I should be dead. They said that there, there's no way that I should have survived. When I got out of my coma. I couldn't walk and I, I couldn't talk. I couldn't breathe on my own. I had to get like therapy in the hospital for two months. And then I started to, I started to read my Bible. You know, God saved my life and he gave me a second chance. I didn't want to waste that with going back to living the way that I did. So I got connected back with Legacy House and there was a lot of things that, you know, I had to work through, but I came back more willing and more um, excited to see what God um, was gonna do in my life. Over the last year that I've been at Legacy, God has done a lot of really awesome things in my life. I've learned how to actually love people and, you know, allow them to love me. Being at Legacy has helped me to not only see like the love of Christ through, you know, Rich and Brandy and Simone, but to actually like learn how to accept the love of Jesus in my life and to demonstrate that love. Because I never used to be loving, I used to be angry and hurtful. I go to church every Sunday and then after that we go to to uh, lunch together as a family. And we talked about the sermon and what we liked and what God revealed to us through the sermon. Tuesdays during the week is also the time when we as a legacy family um, get together and we have dinners. And then after dinner, 
we have Bible study, God has revealed to me that He has like a big calling and a big purpose for my life. I want to be an evangelist one day and spread the love of Christ and how much that He's changed my life and saved my life and how much He's done for me. Because God has changed my life through Legacy House, I know He wants to change others' lives through Legacy House. There are a lot of girls like me that don't have families and that are aged out of foster care and they need a home. Thank you for listening to my story and for helping to restore my legacy. I'm really excited for what God's going to do through your partnership.